Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It's a great pleasure for me to be here from, from England, and I'd like to thank all the organizers for uh, inviting me. This will be a fairly brief run-through of the FIFA 11 for Health program, and it will be followed by a specific presentation by uh, Dr. Chile from Curitiba, describing the experiences of 11 for Health here in, uh, in Brazil. The first thing which I just wanted to go through was um, add to some of the information which uh, <coughs> Professor Yeji Dvorak gave you about the background to FIFA 11 for Health and its uh, aims and, and the origins. From roughly the period 1994 when FMARC was first established up until uh, 2006, FMARC focused most of its re research attention on understanding uh, the causes and reducing the incidence of injury and ill health in the game of football. And it was very successful, and if you uh, recall one of the slides which Professor Dvorak gave up on, uh, on his presentation on the, on the screen, you'll have noticed that FMARC has published over 300 research papers related to the issues of injury and ill health in football. Very, very successful in that period and subsequent to that period. However, at the time and just after the uh, 2006 FIFA World Cup in, in Germany, we sat down within uh, FMARC and we looked at other aspects of um, football and health that we could address. And some of the focus of the work within FMARC moved to looking more at one of the original concepts of FMARC as to what can football do to improve the health of the community around the world. And as a result of those meetings that we had in Zurich in uh, the period of 2007, we began to develop concepts and ideas on how we could address that problem and look at educating uh, people about health through football. And the program that we came up with and we started working on was a program that we entitled at the time the FIFA 11 for Health program. And that's what I want to uh, focus my uh, talk on today. So in those early discussions that we had, we, we set out our aims and objectives of what we were going to look at and what we were going to try and do in this period. It was a, a very novel approach for sport, let alone for football. It was the first real initiative in this area in any sport by any of the international governing bodies anywhere in the world. The aim that we set was very ambitious at that stage, and it was to develop a health education program and it was a program that would be relevant to all, uh, or at least most, uh, countries around the world. And we would include health messages about the most common communicable and non-communicable diseases that were defined by the World Health Organization at that time. We wanted mainly to target children because we felt that that was the long-term uh, aims and chances of sustainability that we'd, if we could educate children, about these diseases, it would have a lifetime impact on their life rather than addressing people later um, in their lifetime. So the initial question that, that I looked at when we started working on this program was, it's all very well setting out to um, initiate a program on 11 for Health, but the question is, is the one set of health issues that's appropriate for all countries? So that was the first issue that uh, we looked at. And I hope on this um, simple summary slide which I put up that you'll see that despite the range of countries, the range of um, economic situations, social situations around the world, there are similar diseases that affect all countries around the world. And the lead leading causes of early mortality are in fact very common diseases. And if we just look on this slide, um, I've illustrated some of them by highlighting in similar colors the uh, diseases that affect the same country. I've taken five countries slightly randomly in terms of two from Africa, Ghana and Namibia, one from the Indian subcontinent in Sri Lanka, one from the country where I come from, England, and also Brazil. I thought that might be of interest to you as we're um, in Brazil and the conference is, is here. And the first thing to look at is that, whoops, sorry.
There are three of the common diseases which appear in every one of those countries. They're all quite different countries, they have different issues, but if we look here, coronary heart disease, uh, main cause of um, early mortality in England, Sri Lanka, Brazil, very high in Namibia, in uh, southern Africa, also in the top six, in fact fifth, in Ghana, in, in West Africa. Stroke is also common um, cause of early mortality in all five countries. Surprisingly for many people, that stroke and coronary heart disease figure so highly in countries such as Namibia and Ghana in Africa. They're not initially the, the, the thoughts that people would have. Similarly, things like flu and pneumonia are common, again, in all five countries. So those three diseases appear in all of those five countries. And if you look at the vast majority of other countries around the world, they will also appear in the top five or six causes of um, early mortality. But there are other similarities. If we look at uh, lung disease in Brazil, Sri Lanka, and England, it's a common cause. Uh, if we look at diabetes, Brazil, Sri Lanka, and Namibia, very common causes. So very early on, we were confident that we could develop a program that would be appropriate to most countries. The differences between the countries are not the diseases which cause early mortality, but is the magnitude of the issues which you have to develop and deal with in those countries. And this is one of the reasons why I'm very passionate about this program, because as Professor Dvorak said, the initial developments of this program began in Africa. And when you start looking at some of the key performance indicators of health in Africa, it's um, surprising, distressing in many ways. What, two of the key performance indicators that are used by the World Health Organization is um, expected life expectancy, you know, your predicted life expectancy at, at birth, and the mortality rate for under five children in uh, individual countries. And I looked at the figures for Africa where the uh, mortality rate for un at under five years old is about 110 to 120 per thousand life births. And if I translate that into my life, I have four children and four grandchildren. That means if they were born in one of the countries in southern Africa, at least one of them would have died before they were five years old. So that's quite an eye-opening factor that you take into account. Second aspect is life expectancy if you were born in southern Africa. And the fact of life is that if I'd been born in southern Africa, I would have probably been dead 16 years ago. The other aspect is that if you look at the people on the front row here who are sitting in the medical committee for FIFA, probably 75% of them would have been dead by now. But they're not. They were fortunate. They weren't born in southern Africa, south countries of southern Africa. So we're fortunate to have their expertise. But when you start looking at details like that, you realize the contribution that you can make in an area like this, and one which is very important to look at. And it's been really consuming my life within FMARC, as it has with um, Professor Yeji Dvorak and Dr. Astrid Junger for the last six to eight years. And it's uh, a great contribution, I think, that football can make in, in this way. So that's why I'm passionate about the program. I'll now talk, hope I've convinced you of why it's so important and the contribution that it can make, um, not just in Africa where we started, but in countries like Brazil, Latin America, Asia, and other countries. So if we look at the, the program strategy following on from the the discussion which Professor Dvorak made earlier, the whole strategy of the 11 for Health program, as it was in the, the previous uh, presentation about sudden cardiac death, is about prevention. The whole program is about how we can deal with preventing early mortality. So we're looking at the two major causes of um, early mortality through non-communicable diseases and communicable diseases. In terms of non-communicable diseases, the major causes, are, for example, coronary heart disease, stroke, diabetes, which we've seen on the previous slide, are related to diet, either eating the wrong type of food or eating too much, 
and lack of exercise leading to overweight and obesity, which are the major causes of those uh, diseases. In terms of communicable diseases, the major causes there are usually related to uh, sexually transmitted diseases, malaria, diarrheal related diseases, and these are related to lack of knowledge and risky behaviours which are undertaken and to, that lead to those. So one of the strategies that we adopted in the FIFA 11 for Health programme was based upon recommendations by the World Health Organisation, who in one of their publications claimed that the incidence of early mortality in all countries around the world could be reduced significantly by addressing just six risky behaviours amongst uh, children and adolescents. First, use of tobacco, alcohol and drugs. Second, eating a poor diet. Three, practicing poor hygiene. Four, lack of exercise. Five, violence in the community. And six, unsafe sexual activity. So the strategy that was adopted when we were working on this program was to look at those six factors and, and some other issues as well, but to provide information to young children about how to avoid these risky behaviors. Initially, when we started working in Africa, we ran up against a lot of issues and questions by children's parents about why we would include issues about unsafe sexual activity when we're delivering the program to a target population of 11, 12, or 13 years old. But when you start pointing out to people that children in Africa and other areas of the world have already contracted sexual diseases by the time they're 14, 15, or 16, when would you consider to be the best time and the right time to educate people about these? It's too late when they've got to 15, 16, and 17 because they've already contracted the diseases because of the lifestyle. So it didn't take too much effort to convince ministries of health and education and teachers and schools that maybe 11 or 12 years old was the right time to um, transfer this information and enhance the knowledge that people had. So the next question is, what is the FIFA 11 for Health program? It's an educational program intended to increase children's level of physical activity, very important, very cheap form of medicine, to inform children about the causes and prevention strategies of the most common communicable and non-communicable diseases. The program consists essentially of 11 90-minute sessions, normally implemented once a week with each session teaching children about, in the first half of the program, a football skill and increasing their level of exercise. And then in the second half, again, uh, in an interactive format, but teaching them about a health issue. We deliver the sessions uh, by, through the children's normal school, through their, using their normal teachers, so they're familiar with the people. We deliver it in an enjoyable, non-classroom format that encourages always physical activity. Very briefly, uh, the program's made up of matched play football and play fair sessions. For example, linking uh, warming up, which is part of the 11 plus program, which you will be hearing about shortly, linking that to playing football, preparation and prevention. Linking dribbling to avoiding drugs and alcohol and tobacco, looking at defending, such as washing your hand, and importantly, teamwork and, and fair play as some of the examples that are in the program. Those are the, the sessions that we, we have in our program. We have a very simple um, implementation strategy. We're looking at sustainability. We're not looking at delivering a program and then departing. We're interested in delivering a program, giving the knowledge to countries, and providing a program which is sustainable. And we deliver that through a, a tripartite agreement through FIFA stroke FMARC, the National Member Association in the country, and importantly, through working with the National Ministries of Health, Education, and Sport. We normally look for a three-year commitment when we're going and working in a new country, and that consists in year one of a pilot study of a small number of schools to learn about the specific issues in that country, typically 10 to 20 schools, and we work in one city. Then in year two, we start to look at the nationwide expansion um, operating using the, the people that we've trained in year one 
And then by year three, we're looking to get greater involvement from the ministries of health and education in the country to expand rapidly through the, uh, the world. So the first question, let's see, where are we operating at the moment uh, in the world? Hopefully this is going to work, but it doesn't look bad. We began in, in Africa, and you can see the countries that we've implemented there, 12 countries at the moment. We've extended into Oceania, we've uh, worked in two countries there, Asia and expanding further, and in Latin America, Mexico, Colombia, and Brazil. And uh, Dr. Chile will be talking specifically about the experiences of a pilot study here in, um, in Brazil. When we assess an implementation, all implementations are assessed. We look at pre-intervention knowledge, we look at post-intervention knowledge, and we look at the absolute change in the children's knowledge about uh, the health issues, and we also look at the, the relative change, because relative change takes into account the, the baseline level of knowledge. I've just put up here <clears throat> very simple comparison um, uh, from three continents, taking results from Colombia, Ghana, and Sri Lanka, and you can see how the level of change of knowledge takes place. There are similarities across continents, and there are differences and that depends on the particular diseases which are uh, prevalent in those countries and the baseline level of, of knowledge. But typically in these countries you will get about an enhancement of 20 to 30 percent in the children's knowledge. It's not just the absolute change in the knowledge which is important, it's how much of the, the knowledge deficit has been filled. That 20 to 30 percent absolute change equates to a 60 to 80 percent change in the, in the knowledge deficit that we have. One final slide which I've just put up, which is important, you can see that in terms of the age of the children going through the program, uh, not surprisingly, pre-knowledge, the younger the children are, the lower the initial health knowledge they have. As the children get older, up to 14 years, their knowledge increases. What's very interesting from the program is that we deliver the children after the program to the same level of post-health, post-intervention health knowledge, irrespective of the starting point. So the younger the children come onto the program, the more effective the program is, the more you get out of the program. So you can see in these countries at the younger end, we're getting 20 to 30 percent enhancement in their health knowledge, which is a very good performance. Final slide. Um, we're still expanding around, around the world, but we have a number of uh, challenges which we're approaching, and these are summarized here. First of all, developing management methods to address the demands associated with that increasing demand that we have for delivering the program around the world. That presents great uh, problems for us. We started off in uh, countries in Africa which broadly spoke English. Uh, which was beneficial from my perspective. We've moved into countries like Latin America with Spanish, Portuguese in Africa, uh, French. But as we move into the um, Asian countries, that presents challenges because of the language which uh, are spoken in those countries. Um, other challenges in the very large countries, such as Brazil and Mexico, that we're working in. And then finally, FIFA is looking at the uh, the financial demands which are associated with delivering this popular program. At that point, I want to finish, and I want to hand over to uh, Dr. Chile. I can't quite see where he is, uh, who is going to talk specific. Oh, sorry, I didn't see you over there, Edison. Um, who's going to talk specifically about the issues and experiences here in Brazil? So I'll pass you over to our next speaker. Thank you very much. <laughs>